You know, and this is a, a fairly typical uh, coupe of what, what it can look like. Um, we've got an indoor-outdoor component um, and a part that can hook up to a chicken tractor here uh, where we can put up here and then we can graze the hens through the yard. Um, a real simple design. Alright, so this is the chicken tractor. And what happens is there's a door in the coop. And we just back this up to it and open the door. And just kind of, they just kind of meander in. Throw a little corn in there and they follow the corn. And then you can just pick this up. Dan, if you want to grab the other side or add them. You just pick it up and just kind of walk with it low on the ground. And the chickens just follow. Like they just kind of herd themselves along. And you just put it wherever you want it. Like uh, right now it's over here because we're bringing a bunch of little kids over later today and we're gonna bring the chickens over here so that they can see the chickens. This is where my uh, pumpkin vines are. As you can see, they've kind of taken over. And some of those brown leaves there, if you turn them up, there'll be squash bugs under there on a dry day. And I would love to catch squash bugs and feed them to hens too. And then at the end of the season, put a little um, mobile coop or mobile run here and let the hens just get in there and scratch through the grass and scratch through the soil and eat all the remaining uh, squash bugs and their eggs and everything to sort of decontaminate for next year as well as to kick in their manure um, and fertilize my garden beds. Okay, so this is a chicken tractor. It has a coop and uh, a nest inside and uh, we've got six hens and you can see that there are five actual eggs and two faux eggs. We keep the faux eggs in there so that they know to come back here and keep laying their eggs. And they won't sit on them because there aren't enough yet because each day we collect the five real eggs or three real eggs or sometimes there's even two um, and, and eat them <laughs> pretty much. And I don't know if you can see this, but this egg here is actually round. This one here, it's, it's not all oblong the way the other ones are. And they're each different colors pretty much. I always get that one almost every day. Anyway, I love these. So I live here sort of, uh, well it's right in the city, but we've got the MKT trail corridor down there and the wetlands, and so we have every potential hen predator you can imagine, you know, neighborhood dogs, coyotes, raccoons, possums, um, uh, hawks and owls, you know, all those things are found here commonly. So I think, you know, when people worry about, um, you know, people not securing their hens. I mean, basically, uh, if you don't build a secure uh, enclosure that's going to keep them in, you're not going to have hens for very long. So I'm uh, pretty confident that any um, urban hens are going to be well contained. And once people have been educated on what it is that urban hens are about and how they're going to be housed and how they're going to live their lives, then people tend to come around and realize that it's not going to be a problem. And so in that sense, it's just a, an education issue, which I think a lot of things are that way um, in, in people trying to figure out, well, what is it we want to do to change our city and to change our way of lives? And it's more about understanding the processes and the, and the ideas behind what we want to do than it is about the actual processes. Like, no, we don't want chickens because they're going to be loud and smelly and they're going to be, um, because that's our interpretation of them, because every time we've seen chickens out there, we've seen them in the hundreds or even in the hundred thousands on these big commercial chicken farms. And so once you have just a few of them, um, they can be beneficial to your area because you're not overwhelming the, the square footage that you have. Yeah, the, the urban chicken laws are it's really standard uh, policy around the country. It's not abnormal. Uh, there's many comparable cities, even in the state of Missouri, that have uh, urban chicken laws. Um, Springfield, has, you can have 12 chickens there, um, like, for example. They're, and it's like that all over the country. So uh, to have very simple, well-regulated laws here in Columbia is not out of the norm. And yeah, I think that, um, that if the city council does approve allowing a few hens uh, per household, that they're going to be happy with the results. Um, I don't think there's going to be problems. There will be, um, you know, there'll be a little learning curve. There's a lot of groups that are ready to do some uh, chicken training classes for people so they know uh, what they're getting into and how to raise them and how to feed them and how to care for them. 
I think it's a good idea for the city of Columbia to pass a chicken ordinance so that people can see where where eggs come from and the more like if I know where my egg comes from it's a good idea because it doesn't come from the store from long ways away it came from my backyard I know what the chicken ate I know where it lives I know what conditions it lives in I think the more chickens we have in the city the merrier I think the city of Columbia should have urban hens because it's really nice knowing that you have a food source in your backyard chickens are a nice pet all the rumors about them being bad are not true I can contest and as Bobby said, it's good to have chickens because you know where your food came from, you know what you're feeding them, you know how they live. And they're just a lot of fun to have. It diversifies your backyard. Good for the kids, too. But I think, you know, if Columbia doesn't do this, we're actually way behind a lot of other communities. I mean, uh, Springfield, St. Louis, and Kansas City all allow backyard flocks, and some of them pretty large numbers. So, you know, here we are, a uh, supposedly progressive city, and yet we don't allow hens and all those other places do. Now, hens are, are real simple to raise. Uh, they, you just need to give them some food, place to sleep, clean environment, and then you harvest eggs and take care of them. It's, re it's really not that complicated. Um, uh, they make just a little bit of noise when they, make, when they lay an egg, but other than that, they're, they're, they're silent. It's great. Real simple. Uh, and eggs are the, the, a huge benefit because eggs are great food. Uh, I eat eggs every morning. And in order to be able to produce my own eggs would be fantastic and it would save me money for sure.